was a brilliant you. interview. Yes. Yes. It was quite a lot of information. Yeah. Yeah. So much information. But I loved her. I think it's when you've got something that daunting that makes all women nervous and you put it in the hands of someone like Do um, Dr. Ch Chika Obi, she's so gregarious, she's so warm, she's so matter-of-fact, where she can tell you, well, the world is ending, but at the end of the day, we all have somewhere to go. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, 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 I feel great, the world's ending tomorrow. She's that kind of person. So sitting down, I started feeling a lot more at ease because I was apprehensive because my aunts have had fibroids, my mum's had fib fibroids, I was like... My turn's coming next. My card's up next. But talking to her, it's, I feel like if I got a diagnosis tomorrow, I just go through her checklist and I'd be okay. It's really not yeah. the end of the world. Exactly. Yeah. That's a great quality that you described that she mm -hmm. has. And I like that avocado analogy. Yeah. It's, there's such clarity in the way she puts the point across. Mm -hmm. Regarding the vitamin C deficiency, for me, it yeah. was Oprah Winfrey. Mm -hmm. She got everybody checking their vitamin C deficiency because she's the one who actually said that black people... Black women are at a risk of vitamin C deficiency. I had no idea. I thought it was the same as what you yeah. said, because we live in sun-drenched Africa, yeah. mm -hmm. that we're good on that square. Apparently not. There are one billion people in the world with a vitamin C deficiency. Mm -hmm. I've never linked it. Vitamin D. Yeah, vitamin D, vitamin D, yeah. D yes. Yeah. I've never linked it to fibroids. No, no, that's why this was so great, because just like you said, I'm vitamin, extremely vitamin D deficient because I live in London. So generally, like sun, sunlight is like an abstract concept over there. But then I take vitamin D tablets, so it's something that everyone can do. You can buy it over the counter, and it helps so much. I never knew that was an issue until she said, yeah, that's it, because black people just assume, oh, we're loaded. Yes. We're not. I knew it was an issue for osteoporosis, which is another problem yeah. for black women. Yeah. So that's why we all have to take it. But fibroids, I had no idea. That's yeah. very interesting. I didn't know that either. And mm -hmm. I didn't know, like, I know the figures are very high for yeah. black women as a whole when it comes to fibroids. But I was still taken aback before we threw over to the interview where you said practically every single black woman is going to experience one form of a fibroid or another yeah. in her lifetime. Yeah, and the, what she said is that what most women will have, fibroids are one of those unique ailments where you actually can get away with just tre treating the yeah. symptoms. Normally when you get the symptoms, you have to find the cause and mm. treat that. This is the kind of thing where you can treat the heavy bleeding, you can treat the anemia, and just leave it be. So a lot of women might have a fibroid that's so small and so insignificant, insignificant mm. it'll come and go in their lifetime and they'll never know they had one. Yes, yeah. well, we hope for those ones, not, <laughs> not the huge, hugely, massively painful ones. Yeah. But it's 80 to 90% of mm -hmm. black women. Yeah. It's crazy. It's scary. It is, because when you think about it, it's kind of... Don't black women have enough trouble as it right. is? As it is. Why? But then I'm kind of pleased that this is the kind of thing, thing plaguing them because one thing that at least we know, um, particularly in Nigerian black people, sickle cell anemia is a big deal. Mm -hmm. So imagine trying to straddle both things because this brings on its own anemia. But knowing that you can actually have fibroids and it's okay. It's yeah. not the end of the world because when you think of the uterus, it's kind of this sacred place that defines a woman's femininity. So anything that puts it under attack, you think the world is actually ending. But she said women have pregnancies successfully with fibroids. It's something that's fed by blood vessel. You can counteract it and protect the fetus. So don't panic. That's mm -hmm. what's going to make things worse if you do panic. And don't always, because we live in a generation where there's a pill for everything. If you can't sleep, there's a pill. If you sleep too much, there's a pill. If you're hungry, there's a pill. Don't always rush to a treatment. You can actually coast through having a fibroid and everything will be okay. So watch it. If you have extreme symptoms, treat those. Don't always go for something drastic. So for black women, it's not that horrible. Yeah, it's something yeah. you can manage through menopause. And that's like, it's so good to hear mm -hmm. a plus side of menopause. <laughs> it's good for something. Honestly, and I, that's another shocker that early periods can yeah. also lead to fibroids or make yeah. you more prone to fibroids as well because that's not something anyone can control. Yeah. Because you know? one thing you do need to check is that some women have extremely heavy periods naturally. So don't freak out and think that if you're having one of those heavy periods, I've got a fibroid. Just get scanned, just get checked. Because there's a, very, there's a clear difference between the kind of heavy bleeding associated with fibroids and just having naturally heavy periods. The heavy bleeding associated with fibroids is extreme. It's protracted. It's intense. You have lots of clots. So when you're having that, that's when you probably have a fibroid. But if you have your normal cycle, it lasts for a number of days and then you're done... It's probably just you have a heavy cycle. So it's really good to listen to what she said because she's very specific when she described everything and she's not too foreboding doom and gloom, which was also helpful to hear. Yes, Absolutely. I like her sort of very 
brisk delivery. Yeah. There was no yeah. melodrama yeah. or any of that. Know. So it does reassure. Yeah. Yes. Because the key thing about her is actually she's she qualified, uh, trained and qualified in America and has 20, over 25 years in pediatrics. So because she's used to treating children, she knows how to, she probably is due, used to dealing with temperamental parents and parents that are freaking out. So that tone of, this is what's happening, this is how to fix it, just relax. That's a wonderful thing to have. It really is. Honestly is. And I think at the end you said, did you mention that you did a part two with her? Yes, I did. Amazing. What's that on? It's, gonna, it's about, we call it fertility because we're trying to be positive on a rise in use. It's actually about infertility. And it's um, in African men and women and kind of the psychology, the phys physiology, and also like the social and cultural aspects around that. Mm -hmm. And it was such a good chat because she, there are a lot of myths around African culture that agitate her and a lot of women and she debunked yeah. all of them i'm really looking forward i'm to really one. looking forward <laughs> yeah. to that one you know it was like the, uh, there was a day i was speaking to a research doctor who said that actually the truth is that one in eight african men are infertile and i said oh are you serious and he said well that's what the research is now showing you know mm -hmm. and it's the constant pushing towards women when it comes to infertility and all the stigma that's been created around it meanwhile mm -hmm. back at the ranch a lot of the time it is actually men who are infertile so i'm really looking forward to watching she just that. jedi mind tricked the whole interview because that's exactly the points she talked about because it winds her up so yeah, much. It yeah. Really, I think it gets every woman agitated. Yeah. I think it gets every woman well, agitated. Well, there's just one more thing that black women have to deal with, isn't yeah. it? That's why we're so amazing. <laughs> we really are. We are. No, but I'm glad to hear that fibroids are not some yeah. kind of death knell, some mm, kind of yeah. horrendous thing. It's good. And it's also, she mentioned, she referred to a crazy thing cells do twice in that chat. And it goes to show, with all her experience, with all the research that's available, the human body is still such a mystery. Yeah. There's so much we still don't understand about what triggers what and really why. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to more research Absolutely. and more light being shed on yeah. some of these issues. That was a beautiful point you made because one thing she said is that because she trained in America and she's Nigerian and proudly so, just kind of the excitement and hope that we're moving forward, we're going to give women more options, invest more in actually giving them the kind of options of treatment and early detection. It's a great thing that you said that, yeah, it's tough for women, but as things evolve, it's getting better. It's it more is. hopeful. It is. Yeah. Because, I mean, gone are the days where women would have fibroids for years, tens of years, and not even know. Now you find out at such a young age, actually, if you have them at a young age, or as soon as it really happens, because detection has gotten that good, and that's important. That's important. And gone are the days when women would have fibroids, and they'll tell you that it's actually a baby for your yeah. enemies have done something to you. That's why you've been Stop. pregnant for 10 <laughs> years. Oh, my mouth oh you've open. never heard that? Oh, what Wait, tell me this one again. <laughs> what sheltered lives? That's you have shopping. women with fibroids. Mm -hmm. They have the protrusion of the yeah. abdomen. And somebody tells them in a church or some other uh, mosque or yeah. what have you, a traditional institution, they tell them that, oh, no, you're actually pregnant. You've had this protrusion for 10 years. It's a 10-year pregnancy. It's because of your enemies it's, that the oh, baby can't be born. Because, yeah. yes, at the time, there were no scans. There was nothing. So women are there casting and binding doing what have you, and it was a fibroid. Can you imagine? But you know what? That doesn't even surprise me now that you've really said it, because that is the problem with a very uneducated populace as well, is yes. that these are the stories that you hear about, and these are the experiences that people go through. And that same woman who is in that church and is getting told that she's been pregnant for 10 years and it cannot come out, is going to go another 10 years not knowing that really and truly what it is is a fibroid. I know you haven't just been unable to give birth for the past yeah, 20 yeah. years now, you know? And while she's, while she's being doused yeah. in holy water, all she needed was a vitamin D tablet. There, there we go. go. Mm -hmm. There this we is go. the importance of information. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. so crucial. That's why that, I loved doing that interview because yes. I hope like, people, lots of people saw it because there's probably mm -hmm. people going through that now Absolutely. where go to a church mm -hmm. instead of to a pharmacy yeah. to deal with a fibroid. Absolutely. Yeah, and she also said that once it's also gotten to that stage of protrusion, it's also gotten quite bad. Yeah. So if it's gotten to that stage, you're you already in a lot of trouble, a bit too much trouble for you to take the risk of getting told that you've been pregnant for 10 years and you can't give birth yeah. because really and truly you may have to just go into surgery right now and save your life. Yeah. But fibroids are so sneaky, aren't they? I know so people sneaky. Who've had, yeah, I know people who have had surgery mm -hmm. and it grows back. Again, yeah, because it's one of those things, bugger. like she said, that's the annoying part. We don't know what causes it. That's why prevention is not a thing. It's more about treatment afterwards. But mm -hmm. treatment is so, it's so varied and so effective. There's no need, to be, no need to panic because lots of women, they have kids having had fibroids and the fiber would be growing to the point where it's showing. But because all the kids are there, they're in school, they're fine, they let it keep growing. But care enough about yourself that it's, if something's off, 
don't be fearful that it's going to be an awful diagnosis if fibroid is treatable. So yeah. what's the role of the government now with regards to information, getting the information out there and the treatment? It's going to, be, it's going to trickle down from women like Dr. TKOB, where this kind of interview will show that it's just about information. We're not asking for millions and millions of money invested. It's just about it's about education across the board. It could be, you not know, like how we have sex ed when you turn 11 or 12. Mm. It could be a class in primary school. Because from the minute girls start their periods, they could develop one as early as 15 or 16. But there's no Just sex ed in schools here. That's the problem. Yeah. But no... this one is a medical one about women's medical health. It's not about mm. sleep with boys. So it'll it's be about like biology. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. all you do is have a single module in every class in primary school, just letting you know, oh, if you have a heavy period, if you feel uncomfortable, if you feel tired, it could be anemia. It's a simple course. And she's, she broke it down into such simple bullet points, what you can do to prevent it, what kind of lifestyle you can lead. And give that to young girls. You can have it in primary school, you can have it in secondary school, you can have more advanced ones in uni. And just have that. It could be in a leaflet when you go to the pharmacy to get vitamin D. This is what it helps with. It prevents fibroids. It well, doesn't cost that much. It's just information. Absolutely. And then, of course, also early detection and the government helping out with that as well. Primary health care centers, ensuring that people can actually have access to the medical care that they need to even just know that they have fibroids in existence, because yeah. that's the first step. So there is a lot that the government can really do here. And then the lifestyle factors, what the individual can do, because the same breeding grounds for so many ailments, cancer, what have you, fat, obesity, yeah. Yeah. alcohol, yeah. Yeah. lack of exercise. Mm -hmm. It continues to re recur yeah. in almost every sort of disease, right? Yeah, so because one thing people always assume is when you're talking about Nigeria, oh, woe is me, what other problems do we have? No. The key is this, like what you just said mm -hmm. about early detection. You will spend less money on needing um, hospitals and advanced medical care and more provisions if you prevent it in the beginning through information. If I know what to do to prevent me getting these ailments, I'll never have to put more pressure on health services to treat me once I have them. So what you're doing is saving yourself a buck at the end by spending very little at the beginning, which I don't see why people wouldn't do. Especially when, mm -hmm. according to the 2020 budget proposal, for health is 2,000 naira per Persistent. person. That is the budget yeah. for each Nigerian, 2,000 naira. It's so. absolutely, it's terrible. <laughs> yeah. any, cost saving, point? any cost saving measures mm -hmm. have to be implemented. Yeah. Absolutely, because where's the starting point when you know that for the entire year, all that the federal government is able to budget towards your health care is 2,000 naira? Where yeah. is the starting point? But I do hope, I'm still like, fingers crossed, I hope mm -hmm. it's increased because it's still a proposal. It, is it a has proposal. to be, right? Yeah. 2000 And also, who's kind of regimenting where that gets dispensed? Because exactly. you know for a fact, if it's 2000 per person, the last thing on the list is women's health. Mm -hmm. it's, it always is. It always is. We're the number one in the world for maternal death, mm -hmm. child mortality, and absolutely. what we've surpassed India. Exactly. It's absolutely terrible. And until more focus and attention is put towards women's health, we are not going to be able to achieve much in terms of progress with healthcare across the nation. But the key, is, one thing I said about that is, as always, with women, black women across the board, not just African women, we, are always, we always have to be self-starters. It's about the women within the halls of power because you have to keep sounding like you're droning on and on and on. When you get given a budget, you have to have a percentage you will always give towards female issues mm. because men will not do it. It is not no. their priority. The Which leads the to the women, rep representation of women in power. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And people like you, and thank you for this. Yes. Well, well, thank you for having me. Because it was really, you've done, great. It's really important to put thank it out so there. Thank you so much. It honestly thank is. You. That was great. Thank you. Thanks. It's time now for a short break on The Morning Show. When we return, we're going to be reviewing top stories in today's newspapers. Do stay with us.